I'm going to show you step by step how to learn game development as fast as possible and actually finish games in the process. Most people quit game development because they don't have a clear path to follow. They get stuck bouncing between tutorials or following bad advice like create a game design document or it doesn't really matter what engine you pick. That's not what beginners need. This roadmap skips the fluff and focuses on what works. Starting small, building confidence, and layering skills. So let's get into it. Your first step is to download Unity. Not Unreal and not Godot. Download Unity. Go right now to the Unity Hub and download it. Why Unity? Because Unity is the best option for beginners. It can do both 2D and 3D game development. So if you're unsure where you want to start or what you want to start developing, it's a great option. Also along with Unity, they use the language C Sharp, which is a great first language for a new person to learn. It's easy to pick up, it's easy to follow, and it works really well. Additionally to that, Unity is a great engine to just use. It's easy to navigate and way less complex than some of the other engines out there. And you don't have to worry about graphical capabilities because for most engines you will never reach the graphical max that you can as a solo dev. On top of that, Unity has a massive asset library with thousands of different assets you can use either free or paid in any of your projects. And out of the big three, Unity, Godot, and Unreal, Unity has the largest supply of tutorials out there that you can follow and learn from. Step two is gonna be broken out to four weeks. Each week you're gonna work on a new tutorial. Each tutorial shouldn't take more than one week to complete and publish, so these should be really small tutorials. And how many hours a week should you dedicate to game dev? Well, as much as you want, but I would recommend at least a minimum of one hour per day every single day. I wouldn't try cramming over the weekends or cramming on one day and then skipping three. I would put in at least one hour each day. I'll have suggestions for tutorials to follow for weeks one through four. For week one, you wanna find a tutorial that doesn't take longer than one week to complete. Then publish that tutorial, add a little tweak to it and publish it as your own and learn the process. Now weeks one through four is not about really learning game dev and it's more about learning how to navigate the game engine, how to navigate Unity. That's more important. How to find things, what tabs do what, where the animator is, where the hierarchy is, how to import assets, just how to navigate the engine. For weeks two through four, you wanna repeat the exact process you did for week one. Find a short tutorial, twist it a little bit, make it your own and publish it and repeat and repeat. So by the end of your first month, you should have a pretty good basic understanding of how to navigate the game engine, how to navigate Unity. During this time period, if you're unsure if you want to do 3D or 2D games, I would do at least one 3D and one 2D and then decide. And if you're still unsure, then do another 2D game and another 3D game. And then by that point, you should know which one you'd rather do. And then you should stick with that for the rest of this process. Don't switch back to 2D or don't switch back to 3D. Stick with one or the other. So step three, now the learning really begins your first month building your own project. Now this should only take you one month, so it's not gonna be a very large project in scope. And you also need to save time at the end to publish your game. I'm gonna provide some game suggestions for each game that is left. You don't have to follow these, but you can if you want to. So step three, you want to pick one game idea, either use the one I suggest or come up with your own that doesn't take longer than four weeks to do, four weeks to make, and make it. At this time, you think, well, I don't really know how to make games yet. That's fine. You don't have to know how to make games yet exactly. You can still go back to tutorials and find elements from specific tutorials and apply them to your game. That's what you do. If you're not sure how to do something, someone else out there probably has done it already and you just have to go reference what they did or take part of what they did and apply it to yours and tweak it, make it fit in yours. That's pretty much all it is. So starting at this point also, starting with step three with your first game, you want to learn how to use a repo, a GitLab repository. Why this is important is because you don't have to back up your project physically on your machine doing this. A lot of people out there, a lot of devs will tell you to back up your project when you are adding major changes or doing updates or importing assets. And that's good practice, but backing up an entire project can be very, um, it can take up a lot of space on your computer. And it's just not the most practical or the most professional way to do it. So the easiest way to do is to create a free GitHub repository and push your game up to that. And if you don't know how to do that, you can either look online or you can ask ChatGPT to tell you how to do it. And they do a really good job telling you step-by-step -step how to create a Unity game and put it into a GitHub repository. 
Now, if your game gets too large, you'll probably have to expand down your storage a little bit, but the monthly fee is not that much to expand your storage on GitHub. On this note of the repo, some devs have told me why they don't recommend this because I don't hear it talked about too much. And they say they don't recommend it because they don't work on teams and they don't think it's really necessary for a solo dev. But that's just not true. It's done in the industry, whether you're a solo person or have a team of 100. Why a repository is good is because of version control. Because if I'm going to, say, update an asset, something might break and it happens almost every time, especially if it's a larger asset that you're using in your game, like a package a something behind the scenes or a character controller or something a lot of times things break and you either have to go in and find exactly how to fix it or turn something off or disable something or you can go back to a previous version if you don't if if those changes aren't really that necessary you don't have to back up your project you just go back and go back to a previous version of your game okay so a game suggestion for this step for step three is something maybe like a treasure hunter where you have to collect collectibles, avoid static traps, and maybe you can progress between one to three levels. Nothing too complex and no enemies to fight yet. What you can apply to this game is maybe saving and loading, a multi-level system, some basic UI, maybe a health bar or stamina bar, and maybe some basic sounds and particles. Nothing too extreme, just some basics of everything. So step four is creating another month long game. Four weeks long, one game of your own choosing, of your own design, build it and publish it. So this, this might seem repetitive, but that's what learning game dev is. Learn a little bit, repeat. Learn a little bit more, repeat some more and keep learning. That's basically all it is. And that's the only way you get good at it is by building projects. You don't have to worry about what advice someone's giving or if you're using the right tool or if you're using the right language or if you're using the right game engine or what new updates came out in the game engine that you're not using, that doesn't really matter. If you keep jumping around and you don't focus on building, then you're never gonna really learn anything. So this one can be a little bit more complex. You should have a little bit better understanding what to do. This one could be something like a top-down zombie survival game, where you have some basic AI zombies, some health to deal with, some ammo to deal with, and you have some combat. Also, anything that's not too complex from a previous project, I might try to bring it in. Like saving would be a good thing to bring into this one. Multi-levels would be a good thing. Maybe a UI or a or some menus might be good to bring it over. At this point, you will have created four games following tutorials, one game of your own, and then another game of your own. Your portfolio is starting to build out. Now the projects that you built from tutorials, I would not include in your portfolio, but projects you build on your own, I definitely would. So now you have two games and we really only need about four games to build out your portfolio if you wanna go into a game studio. So step five is your first, not large, but larger project. It's a three month long project. So for months four through six of this first year of game development, you're gonna build out one game project that takes no longer than three months. So this one, you're gonna take everything you learned previously and build out a brand new game. And all these projects, they should not be the same game extended. They should be a brand new project, a new game idea, a different style, a different genre, but keep it in only 3D or only 2D. Don't switch between the two. So this one could be something like maybe a tower defense game. Have some saving, have some multi-levels, have multiple towers, multiple units, a little bit more complex AI for the enemies, maybe some upgrades, um, nothing too complex though because this can get pretty complex pretty quickly. A major thing to learn about why we're keeping these as one month and three months and then six months is to learn scope. It teaches you how to manage your projects. It teaches you how to keep your projects in line, where to cut corners, where to trim the fat so you can get the product done. And remember for each of these projects you want to be uploading them to a brand new repo. Don't be pushing these to a previous repo from a previous project. Just create a new free repo in GitHub and push it to that new one. So this project is gonna be your first step into managing a more complex game because you're really gonna to have to think about what's important and what steps need to come first because the steps do matter. So step six, your final and largest project yet. From months six through 12, for six months long, you're gonna focus on one game. This is gonna be the largest project you tackle. Now this project is gonna be the closest thing to a commercial release yet. Honestly, you could make a game in six months and release it commercially. So for this one, you might look into doing something like a RPG or basic RPG, something with skills, monsters, UI, inventory, pickups, collectibles, maybe some buying and selling inside game, leveling up, 
Now this one, I would also try to make it the most complete game possible. I would have a menu, I'd have end scenarios, losing scenarios, I'd have everything out built out as best as possible. A basic menu, basic sound effects, basic animations, basic VFX, all kinds, but make it as complete as possible. So by the end of this, you will have been working on game dev for one year. You'll have built out four tutorial projects and four of your own personal projects, expanding from one month to six month projects. You'll be way ahead of most game devs out there. And at this point, you will be ready to start working on a commercial release game on Steam or applying to game studio jobs. For your first commercial release, I would recommend spending the next year on that project. I wouldn't go over a year and I wouldn't do six months. I would do one full year. So you could really focus on making the game work and making the game polished. And if you wanna learn more about releasing a commercial game or about applying to game studios, you can join my game dev community. There's courses, marketing strategies, uh, learning how to apply to jobs, learning how to build a resume, learning how to build out a portfolio, learning how to start from nothing and go to actually releasing games. So there you have it. This is your one year roadmap, seven step process, taking you from zero experience to ready for your first commercial release. Game dev doesn't have to be overwhelming as long as you're following a plan. Start small, build momentum, and layer your skills step by step. If you stick to this roadmap, you'll go from wondering where to start to actually finishing games. By the end of this process, you'll have real experience, real skills, and a portfolio of projects to actually prove it. So if you like this video, please like and subscribe and give me a thumbs up. Thanks.